Hello my darling viewers, welcome back and if you're new here my name is Miranda and I'm the Enchantress of Avalon. So as I'm sure you saw from the title of today's video, I am going to be discussing Sookie Stackhouse, which most of you probably know from the HBO television series True Blood, but she originated in the Sookie Stackhouse novels or they were also called the Southern Vampire Mysteries and they were by Charlene Harris. This is the final book in the series. As I'm currently rereading the series, I don't have all the books in order right here. But this is the final book of the series, Dead Ever After. Every single book has dead in the title. And the first three seasons of the show do take quite a good interpretation of the books. Uh, the first season is excellent as far as transposing what the book was onto television. And the second season does an okay job. The third season starts to deviate. And then eventually uh, the fourth season has some elements. Then from season five onward, there's little to no <laughs> recognizable content from the original book series. But I actually kind of like that in that it allows you to read the books and watch the series and enjoy them for their own merits without knowing how things are going to play out. I watched the show first, then I read the books. And after book four, it was a totally different game. And it was really delightful. And also, since I wasn't a fan of the final episode of the show, and especially the final season was eh, the final episode I did not like, the books sort of fixed this issue. Because I genuinely liked the way the books ended. So, why am I talking about Sookie Stackhouse on my channel? Well, I am talking about her because she is a fairy. Or someone who is a part fairy, at least. And that's my thing, of course. As anyone familiar with this channel knows, I love my fairies. I love all sorts of different fairies. And today I want to talk about how fairy blood and just fairy works in the Charlene Harris, Sucky Stackhouse universe or in the True Blood universe of the television show. The fairy stuff does pretty much work a lot of the same between the two. So let's dig in. First of all, when we first are introduced to the character of Sookie, in the books, it's all first person from her point of view. So we are in Sookie's thoughts and in her perspective, the entirety of the books, which means you have to know her really, really well. And in a way that you can't on the show. And I genuinely like Sookie as a character. I know I know not everyone does. Uh, I know some people complain about, oh, is she just a, she's not like other girls trope. I don't really think she is, mostly because she doesn't purposefully want to stand out. She's not saying, oh, I'm not like anyone else. Whenever asked about, what are you? She always answers, I'm a waitress. She doesn't want to be defined by her otherness. She wants to be defined by the things that make her relatable to other people, which is the exact opposite of a not like other girls character who wants to be defined by her otherness. Now, moving on though, when we first meet her, she is introduced as being telekinetic. And we see this in the television series as well. We see her hearing people's thoughts and trying not to, trying to keep her guard up and her wall up so that she's not reacting to what people are thinking at her. In the book, the first book, there's this whole thing and an interaction with Andy Belfler when he purposely is thinking provocative things and upsetting things at her because he believes she's telekinetic and he wants to prove it. And Sam has to kind of talk to him and tell him, do not sit in Sookie's section at the restaurant. Like, just don't sit in her section when you're at the bar. So that is interesting. 
And it's not something we really see Andy do in the series. He's a little bit more, both Belfleurs, Terry as well, they're written with more gravitas in the book, in the books, plural, whereas in the show, they're written more so as comic relief. Although later in the series, especially with Terry, we do get gravitas, but it takes time. And he's just comic relief pretty much all, all the way through. And he's an enjoyable comic relief. Not saying anything bad about that. So, her ability to read minds is her fairy blood. She has fairy blood and it is active in her. And because it is active, it means that she has this ability to read minds. And it turns out that there's more abilities that she develops over the course of the series that are rooted in that fairy blood as well. But at first, she doesn't know why she's telekinetic, just that she is. And even before finding out what she is and why she is the way she is, she's helping in solving murders and solving mysteries. That is why the book series is also called the Southern Vampire Mysteries, because there's always a murder to be solved. There's always something to be answered. And... Sookie, either because she is involved with all the vampires on a personal level or just because it intersects with her personal life, she's always in the middle of this. Sometimes she's just in the middle of it because she's useful to hear thoughts. And we see her being very useful to vampires for this reason, especially with Eric asking for her help multiple times. And how she's like, okay, you know what? Fine. I'll help you. Just pay me. I'm doing you a service. Pay me for it. And that's fine. So we have that very intelligent way of going about things like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and read someone's mind for you as long as you make it worth my time to do so. And we get the revelation it's very, very iconic in the TV show when we get the revelation in the end of the third season that she's a fairy. And basically, Bill's explaining this to her and explaining like his dealings with the Queen of Louisiana and how that led him to her. And he says that she was interested in Sookie because she had heard that Suki could read minds. And when I did more research, I realized it's because you have fairy blood. Fairies aren't really common anymore. And in fact, vampires thought they were pretty much extinct because their blood is irresistible to vampires and vampires have drained them dry. In reality, of course, fairies never ceased to exist. They just went back to fairyland and were hiding out there for their own safety against the vampires. And her reaction, though, and the way Anna Paquin sells this is just absolutely iconic on the show when she's like, I'm a fairy? <laughs> just the shock and the confusion at she finally has an answer, but the answer is just so out there that she's surprised by it. I love this. And then I love her going to Fairylands because the way they depict fairy is actually pretty congruent with a lot of folkloric tales of fairy and of getting trapped in Fairyland. The fact that time moves differently, the fact that in the show she meets up with her grandfather who himself had active fairy blood, which she didn't know, and he thinks that only a few hours have passed when, re when in reality decades have passed. But he has eaten the fruit of fairy, so he's stuck there. If you eat the fruit of fairy, being stuck in fairy is very much part of folklore. The fact that they show the fairies in that sequence as being very much malevolent, especially the queen of the fairies, is very malevolent in this universe. However, you also later get to see fairies who aren't at all malevolent. They are much more 
beneficent to humans and they either are interested in humans or really could couldn't care less and are like whatever we just want to exist and have fun and we have fairies in folklore fitting all three of those bills we have the malevolent ones we have the ones who are interested in helping humans and we have the ones who are just completely disinterested in humans and whatever you be whatever you are I'm gonna be me <laughs> and we could just coexist it's fine I love that you have that full spectrum shown in True Blood as well. I love the way the personalities of the fairies are shown in True Blood because it is kind of congruent with the way we would imagine a fairy personality to be in folklore. Uh, they're shown as very f playful and energetic. They love to dance and they own like this fairy nightclub and it's very, very fun loving. They are shown to be very sexual, and this is super congruent with fairies in folklore. Fairies are often taking human lovers and bearing children with them. We also do get this in True Blood in the show. In particular, we have that thing with Andy having an affair with a fairy woman and her giving birth to triplets and, and having... And having the birth be very, very pleasant, it's, it kind of just fits with fairy folklore in a weird way. It's definitely a over-the-top interpretation of it, but it's fun. Definitely very fun. I enjoy the way they have adapted older folkloric beliefs into the modern age. I enjoy the depth we get of the fairies in the books. In the books, we get to see so much more because there are 13 books compared to seven seasons. So there's just so much. We get to meet all these different characters in the books that don't exist in the series or are just kind of passing throwaway characters in the series. It's really fun. Uh, I will note that the books do something very different than the series, and that is how Sookie has fairy blood. In the series, they changed it around so that her grandfather had fairy blood and he had active fairy blood as well. And that was passed on to her father and eventually to her and Jason. Jason with inactive fairy blood, her with active fairy blood. However, they did this because they didn't want to make her grandmother an adulterer. In the books, her grandmother is an adulterer. She does have an affair with a fairy man. And that fairy man is the father of her children. This is because she could not conceive with her husband. They'd been trying to conceive and were having trouble. She knew she could conceive with this fairy man, so she did. So Sookie has a fairy grandfather who she didn't know until much later. And it's very interesting. I think that there's another layer to this. And I think that that, again, adds to that whole fairies having children with humans perspective. And that is rooted in real fairy lore. And I just think it's really well handled in the books. The books have a much lighter tone than the show in general. So having this situation, it isn't handled as this oh, Sookie's grandmother was terrible. It's handled as, oh, this was a woman who just really wanted children. And okay, she did this. So what else? Oh, the last thing I wanted to note was that where Sookie has active fairy blood and therefore has the ability to have telekinesis and the ability to use this like fairy light magic later on and even weaponize it, which is super cool. I love the way they actually have that shown in the show. It's really fun. Jason, without active fairy blood, still has some inklings of it, and that is his sex life. He is very sexually voracious, and he's very sexually alluring, as is Sookie. Sookie's very sexually alluring as well. That's the fairy blood. Because fairies, again, and sexuality and attraction... And that's where Jason's allure comes from. So I do hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a different Fairy Friday video with a pop culture twist. And if you have liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog, whiteroseofavalon.life. Have a fantastic Fairy Friday, everyone. Bye now.